your number one job is to be so blessed and have the blessing so strong on you that the other people can't not notice it the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words I thank you for joining us if you're new here make sure you like and subscribe that helps us to get all these messages out to other people how to pray for the lost how to pray for the unsaved today God's way if you listen today I'm gonna show you this is a simple thing a lot of people think it's oh it's difficult it's a simple thing God's been doing this for years how'd you get here I mean if God can save you this is a simple thing say it's a simple thing we make it complicated when we don't get in line with God's plan say God's plan, God's plan. of how to do it we mess around with all our religious ideas and things maybe that we were thinking was the way to do it but we have to have the right elements put together mm -hmm. oftentimes you know if you're trying to make a souffle or a cake or something and you leave a couple of things out how does it turn out okay. right it doesn't well that's not a cake I put salt in it instead of sugar mm -hmm. nobody wants to eat that anyway it's a simple thing for God very easy you got to get this through your head say it's very easy. very easy very simple have faith in the process because if you're working the plan if you're say if I'm Fine. right if you're working the plan you're working the process you will get the result every time God doesn't leave it up to some happenstance if we do his word we get the result that his word promises mm -hmm. so what can I do today to make this happen John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life Yes. did God already do something he already did it. he already paid the price for whosoever right, right? Mm -hmm. so it's not he's not he's not holding back say he's not holding back he's not holding back. so if we get rid of the blockages that are holding back are you here mm -hmm. then it's then it's a done deal now John Osteen he said that most people if they miss heaven they miss, miss it by around 12 to 15 inches I mean they almost got there and he was talking about most people know about Jesus up here mm -hmm. there's not a single promise in the Bible that you can believe with your head and have it come to pass with the heart man believes right mm -hmm. Romans 10 10 with the mouth confession is made unto mm -hmm. so the object is to get people out of their head and into their heart it's that far however far that is you understand mm -hmm. is that very far it's a small thing it's a very minor adjustment think about how you went from believing with your mind to believing with your heart it was a very small say small small, small adjustment so we're not dealing with some hyper expanded distance that somebody has to traverse it's just a small thing mm -hmm. just like flicking a switch it's a very small thing for your loved ones to come in all of them say all of them it's not a big thing see because lots of times we get caught up in the circumstance oh that's a big deal that's a big thing are you here mm -hmm. I know because you're looking at them and you're going looking at it. it looks like a big deal looks like a big thing it's not it's a small thing mm -hmm. is it easier to be believe for small things or big things <laughs> small things right Romans chapter 2 verse 4 or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long-suffering not knowing say not knowing. not knowing so they're gonna be not knowing something right that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance what leads people to repentance the goodness of God right so if we want our loved ones led to repentance are you here yes. what's gonna lead them the, the nagging of you <laughs> the judgment of you now the goodness of God say the goodness of God, the goodness of God. so 
what we need to do and I'm going to talk about this a little bit is we need to get the goodness of God to where they recognize it Acts chapter 16 verse 29 then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas verse 30 and brought them out and said sirs what must I do to be saved and they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house Amen. is that what this says is this a scripture yes. yeah have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. yes. you shall be saved and your house what is your house my house is my roof no your house means your family that means everybody in your family is included in this verse of scripture are you here mm -hmm. this is a promise of God as solid and sure as any other promise of God but it says that you're the one that does the believing mm -hmm. what am I believing for my salvation but also for my house's salvation are you starting to see this mm -hmm. you shall be saved and your house you're the one that the emphasis is on you shall be saved and your house it comes with you say it comes with me, it comes with me. my house comes with me do you, do you see this all right it's a promise of God you and your house you first and your house second so you have to have the salvation first you have to have the deliverance first you have to have the blessing say the blessing, the blessing. first and it's very dependent on how much you're blessed the first key is the blessing has to be on you first see because you shall be saved and your house mm -hmm. are you getting this the blessing has to be on you first go to Proverbs chapter 10 and like so many things the first key is the strongest key and it leads to the other one if you got this first key oh I hope you're hearing this if you got this first key strong enough all the other ones would just take place Proverbs chapter 10 let's read verse 22 the blessing of the Lord it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it the blessing of the Lord it makes rich and he adds no sorrow now we're talking about the blessing being strong on you the blessing being first strong on you he, the blessing of the Lord it makes rich and he adds no sorrow is it a rich thing to have your family in the kingdom of God yes. is it a poor thing to not have your family in the kingdom of God mm -hmm. the blessing of the Lord it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it you might say well I have sorrow because you know my family's not in the kingdom of God can you see that being a sorrow the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it if you have the sorrow of the family not being in and I mean all the way down to the great-grandchildren are you here the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it so if you have some portion of sorrow in there anyone say anyone, anyone. any single one then the key to that number one is to have you blessed more because the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow with it are you here yes say if I'm more blessed, if I'm more blessed there's, less there's less sorrow are you seeing this yes. so the key number one is to have you more blessed mm -hmm. and your house shall be saved are you getting this okay. key number one is to have the blessing on you strong say the blessing on me, the blessing on me. Strong. strong and stronger and stronger. And stronger. And stronger you understand now lot I'm not gonna take you to all these scriptures you're welcome to look them up if you want to lot was blessed because of Abraham remember that mm -hmm. a relation blessed because of Abraham right? delivered from Sodom and Gomorrah because of Abraham right he was blessed Laban related to Jacob was blessed because of Jacob even the Pharaoh was blessed because Joseph was in his house mm -hmm. are you here yeah. it's a principle of God that the people of the house are blessed 
by the person who's blessed mm -hmm. the blessing gets on them mm -hmm. if we have the blessing on us strong enough we simply and it's a small thing say it's a small thing, it's a small thing. Yeah. we just need to believe that our offspring are sharp enough to see it and if they aren't seeing it yet what's the key have it on you so strongly that they can't not see it so your number one job because the goodness of God leads are you here your number one job is to be so blessed and have the blessing so strong on you that the other people can't not notice it think about it can you believe that your kid is at least sharp enough to recognize that I think you can right yes. and if not you need to narrow the margin down to where they can't not see it by you being so blessed Luke chapter 15 here we are seeing the parable of the prodigal son does this sound like it applies mm -hmm. yeah prodigal son right Luke chapter 15 and then look at verse 11 Jesus talking here and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of the goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them his living verse 13 and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into the far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living verse 14 and when he had spent all is that smart was he acting smart no, no he's acting stupid mm -hmm. you could say young childish and stupid right and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want well no kidding mm -hmm. and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him verse 17 and when he came to himself did it say and if no it says and when so it's a matter of when the prodigal son returns according to the scriptures when he came to himself so there's the there's the process of what happened he came to himself you didn't nag him into it he came to himself they return say they return. they return but they don't return without first leaving and learning where the blessing was and is notice the same thing is happening here he came to himself and he said they're blessed my father's house is blessed I realize now out here is not so blessed in there is blessed so the blessing being on the father's house had a big influence on him coming to himself mm -hmm. they don't return without first leaving and learning where the blessing was and is it's a hard lesson for both the child and the parent and usually more on the parent because they're sitting there thinking about them the one that you're believing for is going to come to themselves. you didn't nag them into it you didn't lecture them how many of you know being lectured turns people off what's it turn off turns their mind off to it they don't want to hear it especially from you that's not God's method or he would have told us that mm -hmm. thou shalt lecture them until they come in thou shalt nag them until they come in that's not what he said they come to themselves is what he said and they return we're following the pattern don't call them unsaved don't call them disobedient don't call them wayward when you're doing that and I'm gonna get into this a little bit later you're literally cursing them you're supposed to be a blessing out of the same well should not come blessings and cursings you're a blessing remember the blessing of the Lord causes them to return I call my kids saved I call my kids healed I call my kids blessed I call my kids delivered I call my kids fully obeying and in the full plan and will of God for their life now you got something going on here that God can use they came to themselves 
supernaturally influenced which is what we're, we're going to next here they're supernaturally influenced to come to themselves but no less they came to themselves at least they think they came to themselves <laughs> some of them just aren't acting like themselves some people are under the influence and acting like the group of people that they're around but the prodigal son or daughter comes to themselves supernaturally influenced second key is exerting strong supernatural influence say strong, strong. Supernatural, supernatural influence, influence. on what on them coming to themselves right not strong supernatural nagging so that they think they came to themselves but the fact is we know better they had some help verse 17 and when say when when, when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and i perish with hunger see he's recognizing the blessing verse 18 i will say i will, I will. see he came to himself and his will changed that's what god's looking for i will arise and go to my father and will say unto him father i have sinned against uh, heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son make me as one of thy hired servants verse 20 and he arose and came to his father but say but, but. we're talking about exerting strong supernatural influence so that the son or daughter comes to themselves or the family member are you here he rose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off his father saw him you have to see them when they're afar off as coming back that's why i said the prodigal returns when not if say when, when. Not, if. not if and you part of your exerting strong influence is to believe right yeah. and see them coming while they're afar off say while they're afar off while they're far what off. does that mean while they're way out there some of them are way out there aren't they yes, they, are. they are seem way but I told you remember it's not that far are you still here yes. so you've got to part of your job number two exerting strong influence is to see them coming back you must see this image and hold it in your mind what image the image of them having returned imagine that person right now just think of one person we probably have many of them think of that one person going like this and worshiping God now you hold that in your mind and so that wasn't easy to do it was it well I can picture you know what you should do next time you see them at you know one of the the family get-togethers just have them take a picture of them and say go go like this just go like that and take a picture of them doing this and then you can have that picture of them and you go I hold that in my mind this is that person worshiping God what are you doing you're exerting strong influence on them because you're calling things that be not as though they were and you're seeing it before it comes to pass see this look at Acts chapter 2 verse 17 it shall come to pass in the last day saith God I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh would that include people in your family yes. yep and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your family members shall prophesy Amen. see this see this verse of Scripture is it wrong for you to imagine a verse of Scripture coming to pass no, no this is what you see so when you have the image of that person that you're believing God for imagine them worshiping God imagine them prophesying and the Spirit of God on them yes. are you here mm -hmm. when you do that you're exerting strong forces on them strong forces that will influence them to come to themselves get that picture in your head get the other ones out but no I'm not thinking that get rid of that you know use the chalk marker and get rid of that one and put a different one in there Romans 
chapter 4 let's look at verse 17 as it is written I have made thee the father of many nations now here we've already had several verses of Scripture that promise you that you and your house shall be saved right the blessing will be on you and there will be no sorrow added to it as it is written I have made thee the father of many nations now was this a problem for Abraham at the time he had no children so he has to believe something that is not presently there before him whom he believed even God who quickens the dead someone who's not saved are you here yes. what happens to them when they get saved they get born again they come to life he does this he quickens the dead are you still here yeah. and calls those things calls what things the things that were dead right he calls those things which be not as though they were he calls those things that be not saved as though they were remember and we saw him say that he had it in a, in a vision or had it in a figure or had it in his mind's eye mm -hmm. I'm just showing you the way that God said to do it this is God's method you have to call them the way you want them if you want them to be that way especially if you want them blessed and the, the uh, remember the first part of this was to have the blessing on you so strong that it comes on them the blessings not gonna come on them if you're cursing them you're blessing them you're calling them the way that you want them to be are you here yes. say everyone in my family, everyone in my family. The, spirit on, the spirit comes on and they prophesy do you want to be that strong influence that causes all of your family to come in I'm showing you how to do it and remember it's not that far away it's not so difficult we think it's difficult because we get all caught up it's the same way with believing God for anything if you sit there and stare at the problem let's say you got a, 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 a some kind of a sickness if you stare at the sickness it makes it more difficult to believe God for healing but you're not to look at that you're to look at what the word says that exerts a strong influence on them and they come to themselves quicker same thing you get healed quicker have faith in the process this is God's process this is God's way of fulfilling promises in your life this is just another one of the promises me and my house shall be saved the blessing is on me and no sorrow call the thing that be not that is not as though it was what if I call it that way and it still looks like it's not so what what does that have to do with anything mm -hmm. you're still exerting the strong influence until it does change remember that doesn't mean I'm nagging the person that means behind closed doors say behind closed doors, behind closed doors. you're saying these things you're exerting that strong influence you're using the tool of the Word of God to leverage your family into the promises of God so I call my family blessed I call my family healed I call my family delivered every one of them I call them all filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesying because my sons and daughters prophesy are you here yes. am I gonna say that to them no, no. <laughs> right because they won't listen they don't want to listen to you do you understand that but they will listen to someone I'm gonna get into that in a little bit they will listen to someone key number three the angels minister to them and direct their steps the angels will cause them to walk in good ways the angels will bring about the right people that have the right words to say to them that's not your job what's your number one job to be blessed have the blessing of God on you so strong that it can't be mistaken I'm telling you if that alone was that the only the only point you got tonight was to have the blessing on you so strong that alone is what remember the remember the prodigal son he came to himself and said hmm, this is not so good out here but I know where the blessing is I'm going back there right he came to himself we're talking about other things that 
exert supernatural influences on that person coming to themselves mm -hmm. number two would be your faith mm -hmm. you're calling things that be not as though they were you're seeing them the way they should be before they're that way you're seeing them afar off and calling them in is this making sense yeah. mm -hmm. that's number two. First one is you're blessed so much no one can mistake it number two you're seeing them you're calling them in by faith number three the angels of God ministering to them directing their steps causing them to walk in good ways remember because that's the blessing coming on them do we have any influence on the angels and what they do oh yeah let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 are they not all ministering spirits sent forth say sent forth sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation meaning they're sent on a mission they're sent on assignment by the saints of God that's you you're sending forth those angels to exert strong influence are you here on that person coming to themselves never underestimate the work of the angels Amen. say this I send forth, I send forth the forth. angels to minister to all of my family and cause them to walk in good steps and to come in to the family of God can you understand this can you imagine this this is this is all right you can use your imagination in line with the scriptures right imagine an angel that you sent forth just taking that one person just kind of directing them move them out of the way move them in the way put them where they should be right have them their steps be led up with some other person's steps that they will listen to and my angels are on assignment and I put them on assignment and that's what I'm picturing in my head I'm not picturing this big giant problem I'm picturing a small problem and the work of angels doing things Matthew chapter 9 and verse 37 then saith he unto the disciples the harvest truly is plenteous but the what laborers are few verse 38 pray ye therefore that God will save people is that what he said because that's what most people try to do God save them God God did what he was gonna do to save people he sent Jesus we started out there God so loved that people if they would just do simple things they would be saved right he said pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest now if you're trying to harvest a loved one I know that sounds a little strange but if you're trying to harvest a loved one what do they need they need laborers mm -hmm. that will minister to them mm -hmm. are you here number one we're talking about the angels being sent forth to minister for them and so that they can be moved into the right position but God will also bring the right person listen God will bring the right person across their path who will be able to say the right words to that person pray not for the unsaved pray for the laborers that will cross their path because they won't listen to you but they will listen to the one that God brings to them key number three is to put our angels on assignment and keep them there that's the problem you may have put the angels out on assignment but then the things you said afterwards didn't keep them there Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6 suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin neither say thou before the angel that it was an error meaning you're not gonna you're not gonna flip from one side to the other you're not gonna call them blessed and call them cursed you're not gonna call them in and say they'll never come in you understand that angels angels are very literal they do what you tell them to do and then they get confused if you say two different things mm -hmm. I hope I'm getting this across angels are a huge huge part of influencing our family and their lives and learning how to work with them and keep them working for us is a key to bringing the wayward back 
I call them saved I call them healed I call them delivered I call them serving God when I do that what do the angels do they work to get to bring that to pass if I say they're idiots and they're always making the wrong decisions and they're always in the wrong situation at the wrong time what do the angels do you just better hope the angel just stands there and does nothing but that's certainly not blessing them that's cursing them do you understand mm -hmm. anything other than saying that they're saved and healed and blessed and serving God is a curse to you it's also a curse to the angels James chapter 3 verse 10 out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings my brethren these things ought not so to be and I'm telling you if you do that you're just confusing the messengers that you sent out there to help direct people back in out of the same mouth came blessings and cursings what does that do cancels everything out mm -hmm. right and besides them the number one thing you're supposed to be is blessed what should be coming out of your mouth cursings no blessings only blessings 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 because the goodness of God leads them to repentance persevere in speaking the blessings salvation is in your mouth salvation for who well for you but also for your whole family mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose who's that talking about that's talking about you all things working together for good for you say all things, all things. Working, together working together for good for me. for good for me would that include your family yes. yes yes all things are working together for good for us for our family mm -hmm. bringing them in say all things, all things are working, are working together, together for good for me good. and my family, and my family. bringing them in Amen. I confess that every day many times a day that all things are working together for good for me all things are working together for good for my partners all things are working together for good and I pray in the spirit all the time and we know that all things work together for good that's the power of God bringing it to pass what the thing that you prayed out the thing that you believed you received the thing that you saw before you saw it in the natural mm -hmm. now you're gonna listen to this message more than once you need to listen to these things over and over again and get it down on the inside of you if you're serious about it because these things work you have to have faith in the process how do you get faith faith comes by hearing if you heard this message more than once you got this down on the inside of you you would have faith to believe that it comes to pass you would be a strong exerting a strong influence have faith in the process so number one we have the blessing on you strong so strong it's undeniable say number one, number one. the blessing, the blessing needs, to be on me. needs to be on me so strong so strong, so strong. So strong. So strong. It's, undeniable. it's undeniable I'm telling you and if that was all you got out of this you'd be golden number two is exerting strong supernatural influence through your faith you're seeing them the way they should be you're calling things that be not as though they were are you here yes. number three is angelic involvement say I believe, I believe in, angelic in angelic involvement, involvement. In, my in my family influencing them bringing the right people around you understand the perfect, the perfect. Will, will of God, God which we already know is you and your house saved well say this after me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I, worship I worship you angels, angels go forth I send you to minister to everyone in my family cause them to come in to the household of faith and let the blessing that's on me strongly come upon them in Jesus name Amen. Holy Ghost, your God.